Hey, it's Alicia from mobilitymastery.com and I'm excited to bring you this today because I've never done anything like this. I'm gonna walk you through my beginner's guide to fascia release. So even if you're not a beginner, if you've kind of been wondering if you're doing it right, <laughs> this video is for you. And if you're brand new to fascia release, then this is definitely for you. And I can always use a refresher on some of this myself. So. I want you to know that we've actually created a PDF that you can download either onto your phone or your computer or print out so you don't have to memorize this video or always have to come back to this video and like watch the whole thing. So we're actually going to cover a little bit more in the PDF than this, but it'll be a one page and pretty much the same thing, but it'll be all in one place for you. So if you want to get that PDF guide, then click the link in the description box below. It'll take you to our blog post, which has a link in it where you can get that PDF. So first off, I feel like I just have to say, even though it should be really obvious that these are beginner things I'm walking you through. So maybe you're super advanced at this point and this doesn't apply to you, but you might be curious to know how I prioritize things in terms of mastering the basics. And once you've mastered the basics of fascia release, whatever you add on top of that is gonna come so much easier. It's gonna be almost on autopilot. You're gonna be really intuitive with it and your results are probably gonna happen a lot faster. So I'm a huge advocate of mastering the basics of anything and that's actually how I believe I got so many good results with my clients is I mastered the basics of what I was doing in person and it only kind of went off the map once I mastered that and was getting good results with them. So definitely applies here too. So what I've created here is on the left, we have the basic techniques that I recommend that you master. Uh, and of course, all of these techniques can be found here on the YouTube channel or our blog. And if you're wondering how to find them, there's a search function on both. There's a search icon, you click it, you type in what you're looking for, and usually it either goes by pain you wanna eliminate or body part that you're looking to release, like calves, for example. So if you are searching for a calf release technique, then you're gonna search in calves and you're gonna find all of my calf release techniques. Uh, and so these are my lower body basic techniques that I believe everybody should master, and that would be calves. <laughs> Uh, and in particular, the just the basic calf release technique. And you can kind of, there are a couple of them and you can kind of pick whichever one works for you, but it's either gonna be one usually on a foam roller or maybe using the rolling pin, uh, which might sound familiar if you've tried that one. But basically something that gets the meat of your calf, like the whole thing from the backside, not the inside and not the outside. So I'm not talking about like the inside calf release, which I have a video on, that's a more advanced technique or more like an auxiliary or supplementary technique and not something I think you should master. Um, as a basic and then also not on the outside. So the back of the calf um, and then quads and quad hip flexors. So whenever I say hip flexors, I'm usually referring to the quad hip flexors. And whenever I'm doing fascia release, whether it's on myself or my clients, whenever I'm doing quads, I go into the quad hip flexors. So I always include those when I'm working that area. So quads and then quad hip flexors, adductors and hamstrings, and then finally TFL. And you might notice that there's something missing from this list. Any guesses? <laughs> uh, that would be the IT band, which is one of the major muscle groups I left out here. And the reason I left it out is I don't actually think it's crucial for most people to learn because if you do your quad release correctly, you're gonna rotate to the outer edge of your quad and you're gonna grab some of that uh, IT band fascia that is the most adhesed actually. And then when you also do your hamstrings, if you are rotating out to the outer edge, you're gonna grab a little bit of the IT band there. And the IT band actually needs to be kind of taut or tight from knee to hip. Uh, you don't really want to release it by rolling on it. I am not a fan of that. So if you're doing it, stop. <laughs> um, I am a fan of releasing the IT band from the hamstring and I am a fan of releasing the IT band from the quad fascia 
and I am a fan of releasing the IT band from the bone, the femur, um, but now we're getting into more advanced stuff, right? So you can see why maybe I left it out uh, because you can accomplish most pain relief goals and even optimization goals with these techniques without ever touching your IT band. And I would say that's for most people, not everybody. Uh, and then if you're wondering what TFL stands for, it stands for tensor fascia lata, and that is a hip muscle. It's an ab Ductor. It's also a hip flexor, uh, and that's definitely one I would recommend that you learn. And there are different versions of these, but quads and hip flexors, kind of standard. You can search for that here. I recommend the adductor using the basketball for sure. Um, hamstrings with the softball is my favorite one, and um, the TFL with the uh, tennis ball on a PVC pipe. <laughs> um, Again, all of this is gonna be in that PDF download that I mentioned. So if you're getting a little overwhelmed or confused, I definitely recommend grabbing that because that's gonna help you after you finish watching this video. Make sure you have it in front of you if you're trying to learn this. And then for the upper body, we have forearm flexors, forearm extensors, biceps, chest or pecs, which is like, if I had to pick only one for the upper body, I'd be a little torn between biceps and chest um, because we're all doing this and this and we're hunched over all the time, especially young kids these days. I get like super sad seeing so many kids with uh, forward head posture. Um, so those are super important lats, triceps, and then SEMs and scalenes. And you know, with the upper body, it's like, whew, how do you even pick like the basic ones, right? Uh, because we've got the brachialis, which I'm a huge fan of. We've got the front deltoid, the rear deltoid. We've got the upper traps. We've got the rhomboids. There's so much that we could do here. But in my opinion, these are going to yield the best results for the most, the broadest area. Uh, and if you master them, going to those other areas is going to feel easier. You're going to know what you're doing. Um, and they may be a bit more of an advanced technique. So that's what I recommend you master in terms of basic techniques for lower body and upper body. And then we've got some rules of effective fascia release. And this is super important. Like this is actually the information I was inspired to share with you and why I created this guide, but I definitely wanted to include this as well. So you're gonna use these rules as you explore these basic techniques and really master how to do fascia release effectively using these basic techniques. So number one is safety first. <laughs> uh, and I've talked about this a lot in various places, but I had to make sure I included it here. And that is whenever you're doing fascia release my way, you are loading an area with some weight or compression and that can feel intense. It can feel confronting. It can activate a nervous system response that maybe puts you in fight or flight and maybe makes you feel unsafe. So my number one priority is that you always feel safe because if you feel unsafe, your nervous system is in protect mode. Your fascia is going to automate its behavior to protect you as well. Uh, and you might not actually get any benefit out of what you're doing. So even if you have to back off the weight, uh, even if you can't do fascia release because just getting on a foam roller is so activating to you, then I would recommend figuring out a way to put even just a pound or two of your body weight on a foam roller or on a lacrosse ball or on a softball and just hang out there and be with the sensation as best you can and then work up towards movement and adding more weight and actually sharing those fascial fibers. Uh, and for those of you that you know, have no problem, you feel pretty safe, then you can always add more weight. And as long as you feel safe, go for it, right? Like fascia can actually withstand a lot of weight. And when you use the weighted compression and movement, you are actually activating your own fascia to change itself and it will. So the more weight you use while feeling safe, the faster your results will be. Um, and then number two is we're always trying to compress and shear. So if you really want to be effective with your fascia release, always go after the compress and shear tech, uh, technique or tactic um, with fascia release because that's gonna yield the best results for uh, activating fascia sites, which is getting a little sciency, but you might already know what I'm talking about if you've hung out with me uh, for any length of time on this channel. Uh, but we wanna compress and shear because we wanna you know, unstick 
fascial fibers that are stuck together. We want to release the fascial adhesions, the clunks, the um, knots. So you're always going to hunt out clunks. So these kind of go together. Um, I always prioritize hunting out those fascial adhesions versus simply an area that's tender. Uh, once you've kind of taken care of those adhesions or clunks, you can maybe go to some of those other areas and do the fascia release a little differently. You might not have a clunk. Uh, not every single body part has a clunk, but I would err on the side of assuming that just because you haven't found it doesn't mean it's not there. <laughs> um, they can hide and they can be a little slippery and tricky. And if your nervous system is getting activated in any kind of way, it can hide them from you. So I'd always assume that, you know, if you're not finding it, it is there, you just haven't found it yet. Uh, and then if it hurts, it's unhealthy. <laughs> so if you get on a foam roller or lacrosse ball or a basketball or any fascia release tool and you're like, oh my God, this hurts. Is this safe? Should I be doing this? Um, just know that it's, it is safe as long as you feel safe. Um, and as long as you're following someone like me, who's going to walk you through it safely and effectively. Uh, if your fascia hurts upon compression, it means it's unhealthy. It has become dehydrated, it's lost its water content, it can no longer absorb mechanical stress, and that is why it hurts. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And I like to remember that when I'm doing fascia release because, yeah, it sucks, but it's unhealthy and I want to make it healthier. And what I'm doing with fascia release is going to make it healthier so it's worth it, right? So I always want to like keep that goal in mind. Uh, and then for every spot that you find, I recommend doing 30 to 40 seconds per spot. So 30 to 40 seconds of compression and movement that hopefully is sharing some fascial adhesions or getting those clunks. Uh, and if you feel super safe and you found a really good spot, you can certainly go longer. But this is a basic guide for most people because some people 30 to 40 seconds is like the window of time to get in and get out before your nervous system has a chance to react so strongly that it really tries to kick you out and protect. Uh, and then I generally recommend three to five spots per muscle group. So for example, as you're doing your calves, you might work down your calf towards your Achilles. And you know, if you have crazy tight calves like me, <laughs> you can do five, six spots. <laughs> um, but generally, three to five spots is what I'm going to do. If I'm pressed for time, three is like the magic number for most areas. And then some of the smaller muscle groups in the upper body, like the flexors and extensors, you may only do two spots and that's totally fine. Um, again, these are like general guidelines. Uh, this is super, super, super important. <laughs> and I can't stress this enough. Most people rush their fascia release. It sucks. So they want to get it over with and they think if they move faster, they'll be done quicker. <laughs> but if you move too fast, for one thing, you're going to fast movement hides dysfunction. So you may not discover something that you need to discover to help yourself either heal from an injury or optimize. Uh, and then on top of that, if you're moving too quickly, it's my opinion that your brain doesn't really register what's happening and no change really takes place. <laughs> Uh, so slow, deliberate movement is the name of the game with fascia release. So let's say, you know, you're moving really slow and deliberately and you're like, oh my God, this sucks. You can certainly do only 20 seconds. <laughs> Again, these are kind of guidelines. Um, but as long as you feel safe, even if it hurts super bad and you're swearing, which I'll get to in a minute, um, totally fine. Do the 30 to 40 seconds, right? Get in, do some good work, get out. 30 seconds. That's the magic number. And then, yep, it's totally okay to breathe. Not only that, I want you to breathe. Um, but yeah, swear, yell. If you have any reactivity whatsoever, my recommendation is to let it have its process. So if your natural inclination when you start doing a fascia release technique on any given part is to like, Wah! like, you know, <laughs> swear or yell or make weird, you know, like a lot of my clients will actually do <laughs> airplane noises with their lips. I've never done that myself, but it's hilarious. Like I wish I could record all the noises that happen in my office, but do it. Like laugh at yourself too. Who cares? Have fun with it um, as much as you can. And then this is a guide to my prioritization order of goals for fascia release. So 
I always want to put the fire out first. So if you are currently in pain, then my recommendation would be to get yourself out of pain as quickly as possible, even if that means you haven't found the root cause yet. <laughs> but then I always recommend like, don't just say that's good enough go find the root cause. And you can do that with fascia release and mapping your body, which isn't the purpose of this video, but I have other videos about that. So my first recommendation would be to search my blog or this channel uh, if you are actually in pain right now for a technique you can do that would be the single best technique to get, get you out of pain, or maybe it's one or two techniques, right? Um, or maybe more. But my goal for you would be to get yourself out of pain first and then see if you can use my resources or other people's resources to find the root cause of your pain. For example, a lot of my clients and a lot of the people I've worked with online who have plantar fasciitis, which is pain on the bottom of the foot, end up trace we end up tracing it back to pelvic instability and there's a compensation pattern that occurs that causes, let's say, your calf fascia to tighten up or your hamstring fascia to tighten up, causing the plantar fascia to become irritated and then ping you with a pain signal, but the root cause is actually that pelvic instability. So that's kind of a complex example that I just gave you, um, but in the case of, say, low back pain, you don't wanna release your back muscles. You want to find the, the root cause of back pain which could be coming from your legs. And again, maybe a pelvic instability, but you can actually learn so much about your body just by doing fascia release and where those imbalances are left to right that could be causing something like pelvic instability. So use my free resources. I've got a ton of them. And then your last goal should be optimization. And that means taking your fascia to a state where nothing hurts when compressed. That is optimized fascia. So. I know it's probably hard to believe if you're at the beginning or if you're like me right now and you took a really long break, like almost a year of doing consistent fascia release. Maybe you had some life events happen and you got off your routine. When you start to do it again, it's going to suck again. Like that's just how it goes. You can't not exercise for a year and eat whatever you want and expect to be at the same fitness level and weight as you were a year ago, right? Well, it's the same with fascia release. If you've neglected a routine and you haven't maintained the health of your fascia, then it's going to become a little unhealthier. That's just how it goes. Um, but I would encourage you to go towards optimization. It's such a cool feeling when your whole body feels light and buoyant and full of that water content that we talked about. And you just feel like you can spring through life and you feel almost bulletproof. You are definitely gonna be less prone to injury because of that high water content. Uh, and it just feels awesome. And your athletic potential is increased. So pain relief first, find the root cause, and then go for optimization. So that concludes my beginner's guide to fascia release. And of course there are other things uh, that I talk about all the time and we go all over the place and there are advanced things to know about it, but this is where I would start. So master this first. And I, honestly, I think anyone could master this in a month. 30 days. If you committed to 30 days of being with these techniques only and seeing what you could do from a pain relief, root cause, and optimization standpoint with these only following these fascia release rules, I think you would get so far, like so much further than piecing it together, doing one thing here and one thing there and not sure you're doing it right and then coming back and trying again, adding something new and it's now it's been like a year but you still don't feel, still don't feel like you've mastered anything. So. I definitely encourage you to spend some time with all of this. And then just a reminder again, if you don't wanna memorize this video or keep coming back to have to watch it over and over, listen to me speak, um, I have that PDF download that you can get by clicking the link below in the description box. So I hope you'll do that. Um, and I would love to hear from you if you find this helpful. Uh, so did you learn anything? Was it super helpful? If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and a comment saying, yeah, that was awesome. Cause I always love hearing from you guys. It's the fuel that I need to keep producing content for you. I love that engagement. So I'll be seeing you in the comments. And if you're new here, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. We have new videos that go out every single Monday and Wednesday, sometimes Thursdays, uh, but new videos every week on the topics of fascia, pain, optimization, healing trauma, nervous system patterns, and more. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll see you next time.